Hi everyone, this is Ashley Latecki Ellen Boss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And today we'll be talking about herbs and supplements to keep children's immune systems healthy and strong. Now, I recently published a blog on Stephen Buhner's protocol for keeping adults healthy and using herbs, mostly herbs, and some supplements um, to support immune strength and health and cardiovascular health. And I got a number of emails and a number of people reaching out to me asking if I would do uh, a talk on kids. <laughs> so, um, I do have, I have many, as, as many of you know, I have two children. I have a four and a half year old and I have a two year old. Um, and I've been using herbs with them since they were teeny tiny, um, you know, using vitamin D supplements and probiotics and also giving them herbs. And um, they're very compliant. So if you haven't used herbs with your kids, start them young. <laughs> um, my kids love bitters. They love anything that's bitter. They like the acrid taste. So um, kids can be can be trained um, to love to take herbs. So what I'll be doing is I'll be sharing um, some of the research that I've done on different supplements. Um, I will also be looking at herbal formulas and really kind of how to modify Stephen Buhner's formula for children. I'll cover antioxidant and cardiovascular protection for young kids and also additional immune support. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover, <laughs> um, so let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about before we get into the actual supplements are some critical lifestyle recommendations that are really important that you have in place first, um, it, you know, either before you start these protocols or get them started in addition to uh, running these protocols. So the first one is that your children need to have a consistent sleep routine. This is so important. And again, with the adult talk that I did, I just mentioned all of the research and all that we know about sleep deprivation and the immune system. So the immune system will be compromised. You will have um, you know, less response from the immune system if a child is not getting adequate sleep. So we really want to, you know, different children need different hours of sleep so you can look that up but on average you know children need a little bit more like nine to ten hours of sleep a night um, and younger kids obviously need more they they really do require naps so make sure that your children are on a routine and that they're getting proper sleep and adequate sleep um, you also want to have a daily routine. So it's really important that children have consistency. They really, really thrive and their whole immune systems, just like we do, um, even though we might rebel against, <laughs> against routines from time to time, we all need rhythm and routine. I mean, this is what is mirrored to us by the cycles of the earth, this, the night and day cycles, the seasonal cycles. It's something that um, is very stabilizing for our psyche and also for our physical body. So you also, in addition to having sleep routines for children, they need to have daily rhythms, daily routines. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, engage children in these. The Waldorf School has a number of great resources that you can use to learn about how to create uh, rhythmic daily activities for children, especially using the imagination and using song. Another thing that is important is healthy foods. And again, it's, uh, it's like, you know, this is common sense stuff, but you really do want to be limiting your children's um, intake of sugar right now and processed foods. So it's more important than ever. I know how easy it is just to give them something sweet to <laughs> get them quiet, but really focus on giving them fruits as snacks, even squeeze packs in a pinch, but really trying to focus on fruit, um, whole foods, and then vegetables. And we just had to explain to our four and a half year old why vegetables are so important. And once she understood it, she goes, oh, okay, how many should I eat? And we were like, um, you know, usually we don't make her eat all of them. We say, okay, eat like three quarters, eat this many. And she's like, okay, I'll eat them. So, you know, kids, they, if you explain why, it often helps them understand um, and, and helps them, you know, want to do what it is you're asking them to do. 
exercise and sunshine are vital. We'll talk about vitamin D as a supplement, but you also need to make sure that your kids are moving and, you know, get them outside. If you can't get outside, create, you know, there's a lot of videos now online that you can use to get your kids dancing, moving, stretching, um, getting aerobic exercise. You know, that's so, so critical right now. And then the last one, which I think in some ways could be the most important is give your children extra love right now. It's a very stressful time. Um, we need extra love as adults and as parents. So, you know, really try to take time to give your children a little bit of extra attention, extra snuggles. Um, you know, it's good for our systems too, but they really need it. They need that reassurance because you know, while, especially younger kids, they might not be able to process what's going on with COVID and the big changes in the world and the tensions in the world right now, they feel it and they're trying to process it. So what we need to do as parents is really give them security, love, patience, and a sense that everything is going to be okay. So please do that. Please love your kids up. They grow so fast and um, it's such a it's such an important thing, an easy thing we can do. Okay, so those are some of the kind of critical first steps. Now let's talk about supplements. Um, here's what we know. Studies have shown that people that contract COVID that have low levels of vitamin D have poor outcomes. So vitamin D is something that is really essential for all of us to be taking right now. Um, we can get vitamin D from, from the sunshine. Um, exposure to sunshine between five and 30 minutes on the arms and the legs is considered to be sufficient um, for most people. Okay, now there's a few caveats here. Um, one is it depends on your latitude and longitude, like where you are, if you're more in the northern hemisphere or, or far southern, um, you might need longer exposure. Um, also, if you are um, darker skinned, you need longer exposure. Um, so really, and the time has to be between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, is when you need, that's really when the sun is at its strongest and you should not wear sunscreen during that time. So if you're really trying to get vitamin D, Get, let your kids be outside, arms and legs exposed to the sunlight, and um, you know, just encourage them to, to play in the sun. And if they wanna wear a hat, that's great. They can do that. Um, Dark-skinned infants especially require longer exposure, especially those that are living in North America and Europe. So you know, do consider that and think about that too when I start to talk about supplementation. Um, there have been some studies that have shown that the concentration levels of vitamin D in breast milk are lower than they were um, 50 years ago. And so this might be due to, this is likely due to nutrient deficiencies in nursing mothers. So mothers really should be taking vitamin D if you're breastfeeding and still you may wanna supplement um, with vitamin D drops that are made specifically for infants. Um, so the dosage for all of the herbs and all the supplements we're gonna talk about is by weight. So as we talk about you know, all of these different things, you, know, you wanna think about, well, what is the weight of my child? And that will help you figure out how to dose them. So between, so for infants, infants from um, you know, zero to 18 months, actually they really recommend after two weeks. So you wanna like, you know, after the child is two weeks old and the gut is you know, starting to acclimate to being outside of the womb, um, the dosage is 400 IUs daily. Um, oils are the easiest, at least that's what I found. And you basically can just take a drop and put a drop directly on the nipple and then the child will suckle that and get it into their body. You can also add it into formula. And so those are the two easiest ways to get them into, um, into an infant. 18 months to three years old, the daily dosage is 600 IUs. IUs are international units. And again, you can also place that if you're still nursing, you can place that um, on the nipple in a bottle. Um, you can also, as the child gets older, just drop it directly on their tongue. For ages three years to 18 years, which is a, you know, this is, I guess vitamin D is one where it's not by weight, it's, it's by year. So um, it's 800 to 1,000 IUs. And um, these international units are 
listed on <clears throat> all of the supplements that you'll find out there. Um, you'll also find that some children ages three to 18 might need higher supplementation. Um, they might need closer to that 1,000 or 1,500 if they're living without sun exposure, um, or they have a chronic health disease, um, or they have darker skin. Again, you might want to increase your amount to closer to 1,000 or 1,500 IUs daily. There are some sources of food that contain vitamin D. Cod liver oil is one of my favorite. Um, Nordic Naturals makes a really nice liquid that you keep in your refrigerator. It's lemon flavored. Um, my kids love it. Um, you know, I've trained my kids to love it though. Let me just tell you, I excite them. I say, oh my gosh, guys, I got you a new jelly drop. <laughs> you know, whatever I can do to really get them stoked about it. And I'm like, okay, you know, you can only have a little bit. Okay, you ready? Just, just a little bit. And then they like, more, more. Okay, just a little bit more. <laughs> so, um, you know, work with that. So you can use cod liver oil. Um, one tablespoon equals 1360 IU, so 1,360 IUs. So if you do um, half a tablespoon, that'll be, you know, around 600 IUs, okay? You can also, um, if your child eats meat, salmon is a good source of vitamin D. Three ounces equals somewhere between 450 and 650 IUs. Portobello mushrooms have small amounts of vitamin D. Um, each mushroom head, and these are the full size uh, portobello mushrooms, have 375 IUs. And one egg with the yolk has 41 IUs of vitamin D. So, you know, Think you can think about incorporating them in the diet, sunshine, and then also supplementation. Um, the brands that I use, again, um, Carlson's are and Nordic Naturals are two sources I really like because they do testing for mercury and heavy metals. Um, they're high quality. Um, your fish oils should never smell like fish. <laughs> so um, so you, can, you, know, you can use that cod liver oil. Um, Carlson's also makes a really nice vitamin D drops. And those are the infant drops, 400 IUs per drop. And it's in, I think it's in sunflower oil. It's really easy for the baby to digest. Um, I also use uh, Child Life, which is a brand D3. And eight drops of the D3 equals 500 IUs. So I kind of go back and forth with my kids. I'll do the D3 drops. I call them cherry drops. Again, you want to, you know, bank on the flavor and what they're going to love. And these ones taste basically just like, like, cherry juice or like, you know, like sweet, like popsicle juice. Okay. And they love them. So, you know, some days they don't want, you know, I'll, I'll usually do cod liver oil like once a week and then I'll do the cherry drops, um, you know, the other six days. So it's called child life D3 and eight drops equals 500 IUs. All right. Now let's talk a little bit about vitamin C. Um, the Journal of International Medical Research in 2010 um, wrote a really long, extensive paper on the role of vitamin C and zinc in child in children's immunity and health. And so, you know, a lot of times when you see the recommended daily allowance for these two compounds or these two um, vitamins, um, you'll see that they're quite low. So, you know, yes. You need a low amount just to sustain life without getting um, diseases, right? But, um, but if you're really trying to, to push and um, simulate immune response, to, the, the response of the immune system, you need more. Um, so vitamin C and zinc are both essential micronutrients required to maintain the physiological upkeep of growth and development, especially supporting the growth and the development of the immune function in children, okay? Vitamin C increases the production of neutrophils and phagocytosis, which is the chomping up of debris in the body, of dead cells, and even viruses. And neutrophils are sort of the active frontline, well, they're like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're like the artillery of the immune system. And then zinc, we found that zinc deficiency in children actually will impair phagocytosis. Um, but adequate amounts helps with B and T cell differentiation and increases the antibody production by B cells. 
So, uh, you know, again, really good research. And there was also some research done as soon as COVID really started becoming active. I remember, I don't remember um, who did the research, but it was on zinc lozenges and how um, taking 15 milligrams of a zinc lozenge in your mouth can actually help fight off active um, exposure. So if you've been exposed to it, like, like you're breathing it in and you have zinc in your mouth, um, that it will actually, you know, trigger the immune system to activate and, and lower your risk of contracting the disease, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so you can, I, I have to look up the, the, um, the source of that. Um, so I've been keeping zinc lozenges is my, in my car. This is not a great thing for younger children, but older children, if they're going to be out um, and about, you know, I don't know, maybe you could give them some zinc lozenges to take to school with them if they're older and they can have them in their mouth to suck on throughout the day. All right, so let's talk a little bit about vitamin C and the dosage for children. Um, so seven to 12 months, um, that's, a you know, they're pretty young. So the dosage range there is about 200 um, milligrams per day. One to three years is a range of 200 to 400 milligrams per day. Now, now the, the upper level that I'm giving you is what is recommended. This was... Um, from this was from the Journal of International Medicine Research, and this is sort of the upper safe level. Um, what will happen if you give too much vitamin C is often just diarrhea. So it's not like a terrible thing, and it could be helpful for kids that are constipated. Um, so I'm going to give you a range, um, the kind of middle level and then the upper level. Okay, so seven to twelve months is the upper level is 200. One to three years old is 200 to 400 milligrams per day. Four to eight years old is 400 up to 650 milligrams per day. Nine to 13 years old is 1,000 up to 1,200 milligrams per day. And 14 to 18 years old is 1,500 up to 1,800 milligrams per day. And then 19 years old and older, 2,000 milligrams per day is the is sort of the upper uh, recommended level, okay? Now, where do you get vitamin C? What are some good sources? Well, foods, you know, again, are always ideal. Um, green and red and yellow peppers, so bell peppers are a great source of vitamin C. Strawberries, citrus juices, even tomatoes and broccoli and sweet potatoes have lower amounts of vitamin C. Um, but really our fruits, especially our berries and, um, and our peppers are really high sources of vitamin C. Um, now, some brands that I like, and again, I don't have any affiliation with these brands. This is just what I use, and I know people might find this helpful or at least a good place to start. So I use Mega Food C Defense Gummies. And one gummy equals 90 milligrams of vitamin C. So it's pretty low. Um, so I give, you know, my four-year-old, I give her four of them. She gets two in the morning and then two in the afternoon. Um, I don't give it to her in the evening because it's gummies. <laughs> um, now the one, the reason I like this particular brand is because it has the lowest amount of sugar I found. And it also has other bio, bioflavonoid, um, bioflavonoid containing, um, uh, fruits in it. So it has like a blueberry extract and organic orange extract and cranberry extract. And there's only one gram of sugar per gummy. And I know a lot of other kids' vitamin C gummies have more like four to five grams per gummy. So that's like a teaspoon of sugar. So again, sugar is going to decrease the immune system. So we're constantly with kids having to balance out like we need to get things in their body, but we don't also want to negate the work we're trying to do on boosting immunity by giving them too much sugar. So mega food, C defense gummies um, are good. I think that's a good option. Um, you can also, you know, there's a lot of others. There's liposo liposomal vitamin C. Um, this is a form of vitamin C that's encased in fat. Um, it's easier for the body to absorb without damage from the digestive system. So if liquids are a better choice for you and your family, then I recommend using the liposomal C. Um, there are some really great flavors out there. My kids really like the, uh, the orange flavor by Core Medical Science. And um, Core Med Science, um, they have a really nice vitamin C uh, or liposomal vitamin C. Um, and it has sort of, it tastes kind of like an orange sickle. So it's like creamy and orange flavor. So for one teaspoon of this particular 
liposomal vitamin C, it's a thousand milligrams. So that's, you know, that's, you know, a higher dose. So for one to three years old, it would be a quarter teaspoon, which is 250 milligrams. Four to eight years old would be half a teaspoon or 500 milligrams, okay? And then you can go to three quarters of a teaspoon, which would be 750 milligrams. The benefit of the liposomal Z is that it tastes really good. You can also mix it into water and juices. So if your child won't take something from a spoon, you can hide it in smoothies, juices, yogurt, whatever you want to, um, and then they can get it in their body. Okay, now let's talk about herbs, because this is, again, you know, probably one of the main reasons you're tuning in is what are the herbs I can give my children? And um, if you watched my last blog post, um, I talked about um, sort of pre-COVID um, immunity and how do we really boost our immune system to prevent ourselves from contracting it. Now, again, it's not like 100% guaranteed, but, um, but we can do things using herbs. We can make a difference on our immune system by taking herbs in to try to strengthen our immune response, okay? So I'm gonna recommend the same formula for kids that I recommended for adults. The difference is going to be the dosing. And I did some research and I looked at all of the different herbs in his formula and they're all safe for kids. And specifically what I thought was really interesting is that rhodiola, which I was kind of like, well, you know, rhodiola, sometimes people find it a little bit stimulating, but they actually, there's been a number of studies and Herb Graham published a, a paper um, from that was called Non-Drug Treatment for AD ADHD, written by Dr. Richard Brown and by um, Dr. Patricia uh, Ger Gerberg. And um, they actually noted that specifically rhodiola can be helpful for kids with ADHD. So pretty awesome. So that's, you know, this formula might not only help with with boosting the immune system as it's full of immune modulators. Um, it's also an adaptogen, so it helps the child adapt to stress. But we also have an herb in here that may also help with um, ADHD and hyperactive um, behaviors, which <laughs> when, you're, when you're in the house with kids, you know, it's nice to, you know, nice to think that there might be just a little bit of a mellowing agent um, happening with their herbal formula. Um, now, if your child has any issues with high blood pressure um, or a kidney disease, um, then you may want to substitute um, take out the licorice and substitute reishi instead, since licorice does seem to drive blood pressure and it can put some strain on the kidneys. Okay, so what are the doses? The standard adult dose is, is um, set for 150 pounds. So that's important to note. So when we take that adult dose and we divide it down, um, I created a little chart and maybe I'll figure out a way to post this for you guys. Um, but here's the children's dosage for Stephen Buhner's protocol. And again, just to reiterate, his protocol is posted um, on the pre-COVID um, uh, blog that I wrote, um, and it's posted on YouTube, and it's also on his page, Stephen Herod Buhner, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-H-A-R-R-O-D, B U H N E R dot com and look under his protocols, or I think it's under his articles, and you'll see his COVID article. Scroll to the bottom for his recipe. Okay, so I'm not going to go through it again. The herbs are Eleuthero, Astragalus, Cordyceps, Rhodiola, and Licorice. Okay. So once you have the formula, here's how you're going to dose it for kids. So for kids that are 20 to 30 pounds, it's an eighth of a teaspoon three times a day. Now, I don't know about your kids and I don't know about you, but sometimes I have a hard time three times a day dosing. I know it's ideal because you wanna have your blood levels consistent with the amount of herbs in your system throughout the day. So three time a day dosing is ideal, but with kids you might be you know, you might have better luck with doing twice a day dosing. So if you want to do twice a day dosing for a child that's 20 to 30 pounds, um, it's going to be 18 drops twice a day. Okay, so I'll give you both the three time a day dose and the um, two time a day dose. Okay. Um, just so you know also, an eighth of a teaspoon is 12 drops. So I think I'm gonna have to put this graph out that I made for you guys so you guys can see it, okay? 30 to 50 pounds, 
um, is a quarter teaspoon three times a day, or if you're gonna dose twice a day, it's 38 drops twice a day. If you're doing, uh, if your child is 50 to 75 pounds, it's a half a teaspoon three times a day, or it is um, 75 drops twice a day, which is about three quarters of a teaspoon twice a day. If your child is between 75 and 100 pounds, it's three quarters of a teaspoon three times a day. And that would be about um, 112 drops twice a day or approximately one teaspoon twice a day, okay? So that's your dosing for the herbs. Now, what else? So, Stephen Buhner also talks about the importance of prepping our cardiovascular system using antioxidant uh, strengthening herbs. And also um, he recommends a number of different enzymes, which I'm not gonna be recommending for children. So what I'm using for my girls is Hawthorne solid extract. And so this is a sort of a jelly or a jam that uses Hawthorne berries. This is made, the one I use is by herbalists and alchemists. Um, this is formulated by uh, David David Winston, who is a very well-known herbalist and makes really wonderful herbal products. And so the kids dose, um, and this is, you know, the, the adult dose is half a teaspoon twice a day or one teaspoon daily. So if we think about, you know, a child that is, um, you know, somewhere around like 40 pounds, it's going to be about an eighth of a teaspoon twice a day. Um, or if they're more like, you know, 50, 50 pounds or so, maybe 50 to 75 pounds, it's going to be a quarter teaspoon um, twice a day. Now, um, I dose my kids a little bit higher just because, um, you know, I, I, and I don't give it to them every single day. So what I've done with my girls is I give it to them, I give them about maybe a quarter teaspoon um, every other day. So it's a little bit on the higher side, but I'm not doing it every single day, but just giving them a little bit of a boost. And um, so, yeah, so, but you can, you know, you have to do what works for, for you and your family. Um, additional immune support that I would recommend, elderberry syrup. I know there's a lot of people that are afraid of elderberry now because of um, some of the information that was posted about cytokine storms. So uh, if your child has an autoimmune disease and they contract COVID, don't give them elderberry syrup. But in terms of using it as a preventative, if they are not sick and there is no fever response, I think it's a wonderful supplement to give. And so um, I like to use Bee Gardens Oxymel which is an, a blend of apple cider vinegar and syrup, um, and elderberry syrup. It's delicious and it works. I, I like to put it in, my girls like to drink warm milk and honey every morning. And so I do, I warm up their milk and I put in a little bit of the um, elderberry syrup in there and it turns purple and they really love that. And it's, so the dosage is about a quarter to half a teaspoon, two to three times a day. I also recommend probiotics because we know that the, the health of the gut also can impact our immunity and our mood and our ability to, to regulate our moods. Um, so we want to um, make sure that our, our children's gut health and also, you know, so they can be assimilating and processing um, all of the foods that they're eating, the good foods that they're eating. So um, for children, I found powders to be the easiest way to get them in. I use Garden of Life Pro, uh, Garden of Life Raw Probiotics for Kids. I use strawberry flavor and it's like a little powder. I keep it in the fridge and I'll, dri I'll sprinkle it on their yogurt. Um, sometimes I'll sprinkle it on their oatmeal if it's not too hot. <laughs> um, but um, there's five billion cultures in, um, it, mixed in it per serving. Kids three months and older can start with a quarter teaspoon daily and increase to three quarters of a teaspoon daily. So I usually do somewhere around like half a teaspoon just sprinkled over their food, maybe three to four times a week. If your child has a lot of gut issues, then I would definitely recommend doing that daily for them. You can also, if your child is breastfeeding or using formula, you can mix it in with the breast milk and give it to them in a bottle or mix it in with the formula and give it to them in a bottle. Um, and water is an option, but it's certainly not as tasty.
All right. So in closing, I wanted to say a few things. Um, the first one is if you have ever been on an airplane, you know how the flight attendants always say, um, always put your mask on before helping others. And so I'm going to recommend this to you as parents too. Put your own mask on, take care of yourself, make sure you're getting enough rest, that you're getting your supplements, that you're getting exercise, that you're getting sunshine, um, because you are gonna be better equipped to help your children if you are in a good state. So please put yourself first in this. The other thing is that by putting yourself first, you're gonna be modeling really good behavior for your children. They're gonna see what you're doing. They're gonna see mom or dad, um, you know, or, or their caregiver is taking care of themselves. And then they're gonna feel more comfortable and confident to do that themselves. Also, they need us to be, to be centered and calm. Now, I know that that's not always humanly possible all the time, but as much as we can, if we're really taking care of ourselves and putting our self-care as a priority, um, then we're gonna be able to create a more calm, centered environment and a more stable space for our children so that their systems, their immune systems and their um, cortisol levels can stay low, right? So that they can stay stable just as we, you know, we wanna keep them healthy, but we also have to model that and do that ourselves as well. So um, I hope that is helpful and gives you some ideas. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them. If you have other things you're doing for your children to keep them healthy through the, these sort of unsettled times, um, let me know. And I wish you all a very relaxing and peaceful and healthy day. Thanks so much for watching.